Hello, guys. Hello, guys. We are here. Are you here? Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Uh, we are here today. Are you here? Um, <clears throat> Please come in, please come in, please come in, please come in. We are here, guys. Um, please come through, guys. Come through, guys. We are here. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, yes, come through. Bayina, Bayina, Zemang, Zemang, Bayina, Lobo, Wolfe. Mutumang, Limang, Atle, Mutumang, Limang. <laughs> Mutumang, Lia Bitwa, Lobo, Wolfe. Zenang, Barale, Shubarai, Shutenang. She joined us to see him sim better, but I could Zenang by issue. <laughs> thank you guys come through come through we see you we apologize for being late um uh it's a friday again we almost had some issues and yeah technical issues but we are good um it's a friday uh the hour everywhere guys can you hear me someone says oh, i should bring up my volume can you hear me clearly am i loud enough Bahayeshu, please come through. Kompene. Na kumbela na kumbala ba zone bankene. Kumbela ba zone bankene. Come through, guys. Come through, guys. Are we within? You can hear me clearly, right? Okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, thank you so much, guys. Um, uh, apologies again for starting late, um, but we are here now. We are here. Um, uh, interesting topic, interesting topic today, and... Um, Thank you so much for coming through. Lebu, are you here? Lebu, are you here? Talk to me. Talk to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up, Baba. Bring it up. Can are you hear you me now? Ah, we can hear you clearly, my brother. Josie, Josie, are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here. How are you doing? Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good, guys. I'm good. I can't complain. Uh, great day. Aaron, you can hear everyone clearly. We're good to go, right? Yes, yes, I can hear everyone. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, apologies for starting late, uh, but we are here. A quick one. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thanks to Crotchet. Uh, thanks to Crotchet, Ocreo, um, Basilia, LT Branding House. Those are our partners. Thank you so much for coming through, guys. Thank you. We know that you've been very supportive. No matter how I borer, but you're always here. We thank you for the commitment. Uh, highly appreciated. Um, so, um, shoo, what a topic today. And uh, I think I must say this, guys, the information we are about to share today and the discussion today, honestly, honestly speaking, from the bottom of, my heart, of our heart, this one... Um, is supposed to be having a price tag to it uh, because we'll be sharing some of the things that we that we do. So today it's actually a masterclass. Uh, it's a masterclass for all producers and musicians. Um, um, honestly, honestly, today we are we we are um, 
we are collecting offering uh, around half past 10. So get yourself ready around half past 10. Get yourself ready. Um, this one is this one is um, it's going to be a very nice um, um, class. So we're discussing the do's and don'ts in a production live cycle. Um, we've been having a lot of questions about the do's and don'ts. And um, so we just thought today, maybe let's go back to those questions and, and tackle them so that we don't leave people unanswered. And I still know that there's a lot of questions that are there that we haven't touched. And uh, we are hoping that when, as we go um, before, before season one ends, uh, before season one ends of producers talk would have answered all the questions and everyone will be happy and um, <clears throat> um, so we, we 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 trust that all the episodes that we've done so far today when episode eight um, today is nine it's nine today yeah yeah, today is episode nine. Today is episode nine. Excuse me there. So, and um, I hope with all the nine, ep the eight episodes that we've had already have been really helpful to some of you. Um, and I know some some obviously are here uh, to really listen and, and take some notes. And I know that some of you are here for the, for the chats and the comments and whatnot. We still love you. We bless you. Um, but... Um, so hey, information. Just want to send a shout out to my friends in the US, uh, friends in uh, Eswatini, Tanzania. Everyone is here. Everyone is here. Thank you so much, guys. Um, is Baraga here? Baraka will always be here, my brother. I will, uh, I will drag him. Lord. I will drag <laughs> him to the phone, just for him to wear. And and and, and all the way and all the way to, uh, uh, yeah, Ish, yeah, I know there's too many of you guys. Uh, thank you so much. We've been receiving amazing texts and, and inboxes. Let's get on to it, because we are late. So yeah, the do's and don'ts, guys. Um, let's start with the business. Let's start with the business. The first point I have is uh, the discussions that you need to have after the first the first call. When when the first call comes through and you're doing the one-on-one -on -one meeting with the, your client, um, we'll be dis discussing how to approach the issue of contract and uh, and your producer's fee. Um, uh, 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 or your 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 producer's contract, or your pro uh, production fee, Yako, as a producer, how to deal with that? Number one, and we'll be going through the issues of payments, payment terms, uh, uh, service provider payments, and all of that. Uh, quotations. We're gonna get into the quotation as well, but let's take it from top. Let's take it from top, and then, guys, today we're just giving you the infos, and I know some of the things we might have dealt with on the previous episodes, but today we just wanna take it out step by step nicely and then um, by the time we end today at least it would have given you the blueprint of how to approach this thing um, 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 and uh, and yeah Josie do you want to share something around your, your your discussions when you meet the your client the first time what are the main important things for you that you usually and how do you approach it as well uh, from the, uh, the issues of how do you bring about the contract because obviously I'm seeing you for the first time and I, I, I want you to produce my album. Um, what are the questions or what are the things that you want to make make clear from the onset regarding the producer's contract? How do you approach that? Um, yeah, take us through that. Cool, good evening, everybody. I would love to do shout outs, but I think it's gonna take a while. Uh, it's good to be here again. Um, in my case, uh, Obviously, it always starts with the phone call. They call you up. Um, the The experiences are different every time. Uh, most people call you, well, most people lately that call me, I think, are particular about wanting me to do the production, but it's not always the case. Sometimes somebody just needs a producer uh, and your name popped up in some recommendation 
and some people were probably reluctant about it and others are not but yeah most of the time more often than not most of the time when i get a call it's because somebody is actually looking for me which is always a blessing and a pleasure and i appreciate that um so i think one of the things that you should always pay attention to as a thing you should avoid is 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 take light any phone call you get so i always try the best i can to to actually physically be at the meeting with as many people as they would want to meet with me and it's very infeasible it's very impractical it takes up too much time it takes up a lot of fuel um, but yeah i always try to give people the time to so that i hear their perspective and i hear their heart and i hear what and it gives me an opportunity to hear if i'm actually the right person to do what they need done and if i'm if i'm if i if i get a sense that i don't fit what they are trying to build i, I always try my best to redirect them to a different place but um the one of the things you should um you should you should not neglect to do is be upfront about the costs because sometimes uh people don't realize how expensive these things can get so but generally i wouldn't necessarily have a code for you when i come into the meeting what i would need to know is what is your plan for the production what it, what does the production look like um and, is it, is it is it a does it require a lot of people as far as the people working on it are concerned um is it a long term production and all those details they kind of then give me a perspective of what i'm looking at from from a pricing perspective but but it is important to make sure that there's clarity from the onset about all the cost implications clarity about what goes into you coming on board your fee the average fee of the people you're bringing on board uh all the royalty conversations try to put them out there as early as possible which is something we sometimes overlook um like the producers contract discussing the 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 implications of that on the mechanical royalties what it means if you end up getting involved in composition um most artists don't know that in actuality if you send me a voice note that's just the voice note and i end up putting together chords and structures to it i'm actually doing the composition for you and you are doing the authorship and if i go further and add lyrics then even from that perspective we are we actually entering into spaces like that so it's better that you clarify everything from scratch so that people don't feel like you're trying to rip them off of their royalties because most people especially in our circles are not that educated about the industry there and so um try to cover all those technical conversations and something you pointed out in the question the terms of payments always make sure they're they're clear from the onset when you expecting to get paid how much and in how many segments are you expecting the payments and and the transparency to kind of clarify what what each payment represents. So I think more than anything for me the first conversation is a lot more educational than it is anything else to clarify your working process and understanding where the artist is coming from and trying to find common ground and 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 some kind of way which you guys can work going forward and if there's a need for negotiations it's it's within those conversations where negotiations can be reached. Yeah. And then and then just to come in there uh you you now you've touched on the contract you've touched on the payments uh, discussion um um can you can you can you then uh, quickly uh, maybe uh, obviously just just only the descriptions what what is in your quotation what 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 if 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 then if then we we agree on the first meeting and then i say to you uh, please send me the uh, the the quote what are the things how do you break it down how do you break it down what are the important things that need to be there and needs to be clear as well um generally how my my code will get will, will break down is um one of the things that that I'm generally always particular about whenever I go into a production um I'm very specific about two very two very very particular things uh I'm 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 specific about the band I'm always 
if I'm going to do the production, I have to bring a band of my selection. And the second thing I'm absolutely particular about is the mixing engineer. Those two things are, I'm generally very rigid about when I go into a production. And as a consequence, most of the time, I try to ensure that the conversation covers, in my quotation, those particular things are covered uh, so that so that I don't get surprised going forward and you tell me, um, yeah, I can't afford that engineer anymore. Uh, can we rather go with someone else? So it's better if everything is pre-included in, in, in the initial conversation. So, and then it, in that, that will mean in my quotation, it includes my, my, my producing fee, which, which, which uh, the, the details of which most of the time go way up beyond the expectations of producing because you end up being a production manager, you end up being a, a coordinator of some sort, you get involved in design in building sequences, you get involved in harmony arrangements, in band arrangements, you get involved in songwriting, you get involved in a lot of communication with technical teams and all these things, which, which sometimes is not necessarily the job description of a producer, but you know, yeah, that's, but all that is included in my fee as a producer. And then there's the band fee. And within the band fee, there's the payment for the work. And then there's rehearsal fees. Uh, but how I break them down is I'll put your, the band fee and you can, and then I'll have rehearsal fees for anybody who's going to be involved in the rehearsal. And that includes the rehearsal venue. That includes the catering costs that come with that. Um, and then I would also include post-production costs. That would mean the overdub studio that is required, the number of days I estimate we're gonna need for that. Um, the, if, if, the, if I'm bringing the vocalists, obviously all the, all the additional costs that come with, with overdub fees, if there are any. And and then that also include um, the the payment for for the engineers involved. Um, I'm also usually, if it's a live recording, I'm also usually particular about who's doing the front of house. So if so, that is also somewhat included sometimes in my quotation. So, but I I try to include as many things as possible, and and part of I I try to include everything. And one of the personal philosophies I have. I don't know if it's it, you, somebody can add it as a don't to their list. Um, one of one of the things I always avoid doing is going back to the client and reviewing the the code I gave you, unless if there are very significant changes that came from the client themselves. But my personal approach is that if I told you that from rehearsals to the gig, getting to the gig, to doing the gig, to doing overdubs, to getting mixed, and finally getting your master. If I told you that this is my final figure, I never want to go back to you and be like, hey, can you give me 250? Or whatever. Uh, so basically, I try to include as, as everything that is a cost that's in there. Um, and I don't know what other guys' philosophy is on markups. Um, Personally, I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not, I don't think like a businessman, I guess. I don't generally believe in markups. Uh, so whatever I put there as a cost, if I, 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 I prefer that it would be the cost that is a cost to you. So I, I would much rather charge you more for me than to put a markup on something and, and hide the cost. So if I'm telling you, I'm charging you, uh, 70k for whatever it's 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 definitely going to be 70k for that if i'm telling you that um, i'm going to pay a musician this much if you check with them and cross reference with them they'll probably tell you they got that that amount so yeah that's 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 where I am. that's where my breakdown comes in mm. and a quick one uh, percentage wise in terms of deposits what makes sense for you um from a percentage perspective, uh, when it comes to deposits, so there's, 
<clears throat> sorry. There's two things to consider when you're working out your percentage for the deposit. Uh, there's, there's an operational cost that comes with doing everything leading up to the day of the event. That includes your, re your rehearsals, your, your rehearsal spaces, your studio time, if you're going to need pre-production sessions, uh, time spend, uh, oh, so the rehearsal fees for the musicians coming in and all those things. Um, so if, 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 if you're working out your percentage, uh, and you intend to put deposits in place for people, uh, the, the operational cost, the rehearsal costs and studio costs and all that, you must, you, must, you must work it within your percentage. So don't simply say, I want 50% upfront uh, when you haven't worked out what that means for you operationally, because you could find yourself with a 50% upfront but by the time you get to the to the day of the event, you've exhausted all your resources, and now you have to dig into your personal savings to make this recording work. So um, generally, my my required percentage is worked out with the inclusion of the the operational costs. So it varies depending on the scalability of what I'm dealing with, because some some productions have a higher uh, operational cost leading up to the event than others. So generally my, my percentage is, would fluctuate between 50 and 70, um, but generally with an agreement that um, particularly when it comes to other costs related, it, especially when it comes to the payments of the service providers that are operating on the day with, with an expectation for that balance to be made available that day. Mm. or rather the day before okay wow uh so guys i'm hearing i'm, I'm seeing uh, uh comments that my mic is low can you can you hear me loud enough am i loud enough now i've tried to pick up my gain um am i still soft i don't how's my volume now because i've i'm cranking up here hard yeah no it's fine it's, it's fine now yeah okay all right we we lost the label there i think um um He's, he's coming back soon, so cool. Um, okay, thank you, Josie. Thank you, Josie. And uh, my my my, I I think I fully uh, um, agree with you. Um, it, it's it's quite important, guys, that you you really make sure as well on the on the on the specifically on the quotation because that's where a lot of things are getting messed up. Well, most of the the fights between bands and producers and 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 artists themselves, the confusion starts right there when it comes to numbers. Now, breaking down all the numbers because I've realized that later, closer to the show or on the day of the show, and then um, uh, and then there's issues. Um, you didn't quote uh, you didn't quote for the di boxes or whatever or whatever that is needed at that time, and then. And then the surprises now, there's lines like, ah, but I didn't know that I have to pay for that. I thought you guys are bringing it. You know, I remember the other day I had to go and do a performance as well. Just to make an example. When I got there, uh, when I got there, um, they, they paid me to come and perform. Our agreement was performance. Me coming with my band. And then when I got there, they were asking me now about uh, the PA system. Um, which I, in my understanding, our argument was just me coming to perform. So I think it's very really important just to be clear on all those details because now as a producer or a music director, when you've quoted, let it be clear that this is just for this specific things. That's why we, we, we want you to break it down. It's very really important to break it down and be clear that this is coming through and uh, this doesn't include lights, this doesn't include screens, but if you want me to provide all of that, here are those numbers here on the site or whatever, and just make sure that you break it properly. Uh, let's go into, I think I think we've, we've tackled that one clearly. It's clear to everyone, guys. Um, and then let's go into production now, which um, you know, on production, we have uh, uh, four points. Casting, selecting a team, Two, choosing service providers. Three, uh, schedules and repertoire. Uh, Lebo, are you back or, or are you cool? Do you want to put there on the on the production? How do you choose your? How do you choose? How do you go about in choosing the production team? I mean, this is this is 
you guys are done discussing all the, the payments and, and, and all of that. How do you discuss, what's the next step there in terms of production? Um, and who chooses what? Uh, where are you willing to compromise? And how do you guys go about in choosing uh, the production team from everything? Let's start with casting. Let's start with the band and singers. How do you go about what makes you comfortable? How do you want this thing to be done? All right. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well out there. Right. Um, when, when it comes to deciding... Okay, Lebu. Uh, me. Okay. How's my volume? Uh, you were breaking a bit. I'm not sure um, your your network again. Just just try it again. How is this now? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Just bring it up a bit more. Yeah. Um. Okay. How's this? We're... Yeah, that's cool. Better. Yes, we can still hear your son, but it's cool. He's part of the gig now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've gained this like a lot. You'll probably even hear my neighbors. <laughs> but that's all right that's all right they are part of this game <laughs> so um yeah i was saying mostly my decision on who i involve in a project i think as as joseph was saying the the first the first interaction or the first meeting with the client or the artist is the, the crucial that's like that's the deciding factor that's where you're gonna know a lot about what you're getting yourself into i mean to a point whereby you get to know what style, what kind of music or a production is the client expecting. Whether you are going into traditional or you're going into uh, urban contemporary gospel. And from there, that's when I'm actually able to decide. Um, for example, with singers and band, I know there are singers, there, there's a lot of singers that we have. And at the moment, I already know if I put this alto and this soprano and this particular tenor, I'll be able to put together a good sounding urban contemporary gospel. But however, these same people that I'm talking about may not be, um, uh, may not be very effective if I'm gonna do a traditional project, a traditional gospel music project so i would this i decide mainly based on all these kind of uh, things including the band as well with the band as well uh, i decide on that fact that factor already i have a couple of names uh, uh, on my list all i have to know is what kind of sound am i looking for if i know there's a specific sound i'm looking for i know which drama is gonna be able to help me put that kind of a sound together. I know which bass player, I know which kind of a, a who, a, which guitarist must come on board, you mm -hmm. know? So there's all those uh, elements that I consider. It's not because we don't, we don't hire people because uh, they are just our friends and, <laughs> you know, but we know that they will come and deliver mm. that specific uh, outcome we are looking for. So that's some of the, let me come. A, let me come in there. Sorry, let me just let me just cut you there. Sorry there. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, you you are saying it's not just because they are our friends, but then what happens? What happens in the situation? I was not even done. Oh, you were not even done because I just needed yeah, to follow up because I, I was yeah, assuming that right. you are moving to something else. So no. no, no. <laughs> okay. <But> continue <laughs> with your question. Oh, now you want my question. Continue. Okay. Follow up, so, my brother. Follow up. I was not done. You must wait for me until I say I'm done. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but but follow up follow up let's yeah. hear <laughs> my, my 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 follow up is is right there when when you are saying uh it's not just only the fact that it's our friends and and now whenever you meet with the client you 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 hear what they're saying in terms of um the direction that they want and then you choose your 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 people in that way maybe in response to what they they they, they want to achieve my question is then, what happens then if I see you all the time in, in the same productions that all the productions that you do and you're using the same pen? Are you saying the pen that you are using when Avila, they, they, they play every contemporary, they play everything. You don't want to give other kids a chance. Um, what are you saying when it comes? How do you respond to that? Because that would be a follow up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying these guys are the 
And um, yeah, I think you heard my question. This is this is this is where I'm going with this. This is where I'm going with this. Now the it's it's important. It's important, and I think this is why why why, and we, I think we've mentioned this. Being versatile, being versatile, I think it's one of the most important uh, thing in this music industry. You know, you 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 can't be a one-sided musician, one time. So there's always there's, you always need to find a balance. And I and and unfortunately, in in the space or the musicians that have been exposed to. Mm know that the musicians that have been exposed to mostly especially the ones that i work with they are able to switch and i think it's because of the music they listen to the music they check they don't close up themselves into one kind of style i mean um i'll give you an example about myself yeah. um yeah so that i don't name anyone else but i, I deal with me so i i, I listen to people like joe zawinal uh, Joza we now does like world world music. Um, I still come back and listen to to the production of Aaron Lindsay, which is straight up gospel. But I still take the influences that I get from Joza Winal to do what I have to do, so that in case we are working on a music and that music requires me to go more world music, I know what kind of sounds I need to put together. I know what kind of uh, uh, grooves I need to put together, what kind of progressions I need to, to put together. So the fortunate, the nice thing about the guys that I've, I've, I've been working with, um, they are able to switch. They are able to switch. However, that's why I was, I was saying it's important that during that first meeting, I already know that, okay, this drama, this particular drama can switch to one, two, and three. But this one can, therefore, I will take drama A because drama B uh, can only do three three points, where else uh, drama B is is like very open, you know. So that's why you'd find there's a jump in and out between particular faces, you know. Mm. Yeah, and I've, I think for now, <laughs> I've tried to. <laughs> I'm I'm scared of coming in now because about you are shooting. So when I I need to make sure that you are done and just make sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> come in, brother. Come yeah, in. Yeah. Um, but again, I think to everyone, I think to all the musicians out there, I think um, as well. I think most of you have seen how we how we generally work. Uh, if the other person is not available, obviously you end up calling the other one uh, who's available and whatnot and whatnot. Yes. Most of the time, I think this is what I've said to someone before. I said, I think when all the time when I meet some of my old friends or people that I just know in the in the in the game, they always say, hey, "Yeah, I'm at a way one book, you mean?" And I, and at that time, I'm realizing that this person I haven't seen this person in over maybe two months plus. So I I usually prefer that if if you really want Can I to. Come in? Yeah, if you want to be remembered, obviously stay stay now in the loop, keep on checking and know the people that you need to check as well. I mean, the, the relationship, I think this is what I've always had a problem with. You guys will help me with this is us not uh, musicians generally not acknowledging uh, ranks and and protocol where 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 I bring musicians, I put up a band and singers uh, uh, and we get into the rehearsal, we work for 10 days. And the next thing, one of the singers or two singers or one of the band members now is close with with my artist that I introduced them to. Now uh, it's like, and then they create this bond. Now he doesn't ask me the question. Now I hear with my client that uh, Joseph is asking about his money as to when is he getting it. Now there's that, uh, you know, I feel we need to be clear on the borders right there as to how how do we go about there, guys? You'll help me there. And again. And, and 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 obviously uh, as a producer you know who you need to befriend so that your business uh, uh, continues um uh, as a singer you need to befriend producers because these are the people that are booking and obviously and and befriend all the other singers for recommendation i think that's how it follows each other but what's what's what, what's your other point yeah so my my other point is now i think most most of the things i was saying were based more on the talent itself on what the person can do 
But yeah. now another thing is we don't only book based on that. There are people who are doing like amazing things, man. Like when someone gets on the drums, we are sharp, like he kills it highest level. He's a but, banger. Don't don't yeah, if you don't bang, don't bang. If you bang, you bang, yes. Yeah, but then yeah, well, <laughs> he's banging. But the problem is when we are when I have to book that person. <laughs> I heard that like I have to book that I, I heard that like yeah, yeah. interesting. So I... which is a fact. If you don't pay, you don't pay, Baba. <laughs> but yeah. So... <laughs> Let me finish my point. <laughs> You'd find this guy is killing it. He's killing it. But now when I get into a production, if I hire this person, he will kill it. But I'm gonna have a problem. This guy doesn't keep time. That's the first thing. Masiti rehearsal starts at 10, he comes at 12. Or if I'm saying we have five rehearsals this week, I already know he's the first person that's gonna say he's he can only make it for two rehearsals, you know. Or he will come to those two rehearsals, uh, not having checked the music, you know. There's there's all those kind of elements whereby most most of the time we don't want to deal with all those kind of uh, headaches whereby now we have to now keep calling every time. How far are you? Do you think you will make it? Uh, before you know it, they cancel you and they take another better gig, better paying gig. So there are those elements that we always try to avoid. So this is now out of the talent thing, now how the person carries himself as well. That's very important. I mean, there are people that we know, we book, we know by the time we say, guys, we have these five songs to check on Monday. On Monday, they are the ones that are even reminding the music director that, hey, Baba, don't forget that there's a B section there, there's a C section that has part, uh, this part and this part, this part. So that's where you realize now that there's, there's people that are more committed into the entire production just outside of just playing, you know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, a quick one that I want to send back to Joseph, but let me ask you as well, just, just hit me up with a simple line. Um, how do you how do you schedule your rehearsals? How what after after doing uh, is it before doing the pre-production after doing the pre-production, and how do you how do you schedule all the rehearsals knowing that these all these days will will be enough to do this production before you even get into the rehearsal space? Because now you you said you want your fifty percent before you even start. So um, is the fifty percent? Yeah. Now I'm opening another question. Let me let's just go into that one quickly. Okay, just how do you which schedule? One do you answer now? I just I just want this, the rescheduling. How do you schedule? We on we're talking on production now. How do you schedule your rehearsals? Um, 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 and and how do you know that these are enough dates for days for 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 rehearsals? And how do you break them down into into uh, post as well? Yeah, I I think for now where 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 I am um. Um, I've, I've, I've found different methods. Um, if, if, if someone says to me, we're going to do a studio album uh, for about 10 songs, I already know how much time I need to work on 10, so, 10 songs. That's from pre-production, rehearsals, studio, and post. When we do a live DVD recording, because of the format that I've put together for my for my productions, I already know by the time how much time I need, uh, whether how whether how simple the process could be or how complicated it could be, but I I somehow have an average uh, workflow and and amount of time that I would need to spend on a project. So. By the by the time it's 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 easy for me. It's, it makes it easy because I have that format. So I would know I would need this many days for for pre production. And obviously pre production for me makes things much more easier, and cuts off more work in a rehearsal space. Even you know it even if you are supposed to, I was supposed to do fourteen days, I can even end up doing eight days and I can even be cool. So I think one of the most important things in the beginning, it's uh, the pre-production process. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 Josie, let me jump you on that one and, 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 and throw, and throw um, we've just discussed production, we've discussed casting. Um, let me jump, let me jump the, the, the choosing of service providers will end with it within this production. Let's go into repertoire, choosing, choosing, 
for choosing of the song. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I jumped the question here. That that is really bothering me in my head now. With with regards to casting now, you choosing the 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 the, the band members. How far does the artist have a say in in the people that you are um, um, uh, choosing? And do you allow? Are you flexible when it comes to that? What's your take on that? Quickly, Lebza. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I, I think in, in my experience, in my experience, I've been in a situation whereby I had to do a production whereby um, there was already a suggestion. In fact, the artist has had already spoken to people, <laughs> you know, to say, hey, we are going to do this thing. You know, the way we're going to do this thing, it's going to be nice. All I have to do is to get a producer. And I'm being called after this person has decided that uh, this is his band, this is his uh, singers. And and in my meeting with my client, I said to them, unfortunately, one of my important roles in this uh, is to decide who's going to do what uh, in terms of uh, keyboards, uh, baking, drums, and all that. And but what I did was in that particular production, I had said, but then who are these people? Who are these people that you are bringing? Mm. Yeah, because sometimes it's, I can't just say, no, 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 don't bring them, don't bring them, only to find out is the same people I was, I could actually use, you know? Um, then I would ask if those people are not the people that I can I can trust to, with, my, with the, my production, then unfortunately I would have to reshuffle so that I get a specific people to help me put together this particular project. Okay. And if there is someone among those people that I'm thinking they can, they can, uh, they can do a great work, I will still um, have that option to say, okay, let, let this person in, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah. Josie, Josie, how do you, how do, how, you're, you're, you're casting, how, how, how far can you, your artist, have you let me let me start it this way with you have mm -hmm. you have you agreed in a, in a production where the artist says no I'll, i have everyone and he gives you the names and let's say for argument's sake you find that those people all of those people you 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 don't know them um how do you go about with that um that doesn't happen a lot um lately uh, thanks to the grace of god uh but I think there, there is a degree of flexibility that I have, but, but I, I always have a challenge. The, my biggest challenge in working with people I don't know is, is, is connected to a couple of things. It's not simply the fact that I'm not sure if they can do what needs to be done, but it also impacts on my capacity to code properly. Uh, because one of the problems that comes with that is that when I'm when I'm saying I'm gonna bring Lebo to play keyboards, if I'm saying I'm gonna bring Sabu to play drums, or I'm gonna bring Peter, or, or I'm gonna get Sneaky, or whoever it is I'm gonna get to do any task, uh, I already have an understanding that if I say to you that we're gonna do this recording in ten days worth of rehearsals and I'm making the estimation that the rehearsal space is gonna charge you this much. And with this much spend on rehearsal fees in 10 days, all your rehearsal costs work up to this much. And rehearsals, by the way, tend to be one of, some of the most expensive parts of the production cost. So now the, my, my other problem is that you are making it tricky for me to do the proper costing for it because then I kind of don't know if this thing is gonna work out in 10 days. And again, um, even if you, you say to me, if it goes extra, I have the money to cover it. You're also creating another complication for me because then that means I can't plan my life be, be from a place of uncertainty because I can assume that I'm gonna be at rehearsals for the next two weeks every day. And then when I schedule some other things in this subsequent weeks, then it turns out that your 
your drama couldn't get it in the number of days I needed him to get it. Now I have to reschedule my life to accommodate a rehearsal that could have been done quick with a different set of. So it's it's really it's really not simply it's not it's not for us just a message for the artists. It's not for me. I'm not trying to win favor with my friends, and I'm not trying to give certain people your money. It's really out of the best interest of your production to make it seamless and smooth and come out as good as you would expect it to. So there's all those elements. And in addition, the, in addition to the proper costing, it's also the, the dynamics that come with interpersonal uh, skills and all those things that flow with that. Because, you know, sometimes I don't know how to tell you to, because I don't know how offended you get at your ideas. If you're like, yeah, man, can we put this line here? And I'm like, no, we are not, it doesn't work. I don't know if that is cool with you or you. From there, you're like, ah, this guy is shooting down all my ideas. So that, that's part of the reason why I don't prefer it personally. And I discourage people from doing it, but I'm not entirely inflexible. It all depends on, on I have done a recording where the only thing I hate about those circumstances, the last recording where I was, I, was, I was in a situation like that, I was called into the recording and there was a band there already. And they, they said, they explained to me that, you know, we started with these people and they gave me a very persuasive speech and the people were, were close friends of mine. So I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. But now the, the reason why I don't like those settings is because after a couple of rehearsals of trying to, make this thing happen it i got to a point where i was like yeah no um the the bass player is cool but the drummer won't won't be able to do the recording and now it's it's an awkward conversation now to have because you 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 kind of like they're like okay explain to him why he can't i'm like yeah you see now it's it's like it ends up coming across as if it's him i have an issue with but it's not him it's just that what needs to be done he can do it in the time we need it done. So that's the only reason why it, 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 that's one of the many reasons why it's not preferable. I'm flexible sometimes. Um, yeah. It just, it just, yeah, it just depends on the circumstances. I don't prefer right. to work like that. All right. Okay. Okay. I heard you guys. Uh, to those who are still coming in, uh, uh, this is the producer's talk. And uh, today we are just giving a masterclass and um, the do's and don'ts. Um, Please don't forget, guys, uh, during this uh, video to to subscribe on our YouTube and like on our Instagram and like this page as well, the Facebook page. Um, um, and I know that this this talk today might sound like we've we've discussed these things before in the other episodes. Yes, we have, but it, we didn't really go deep like this. Today we are really just going through all the steps. And um, 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 yeah, let's go into. Let's go into to um, to repertoire. Um, uh, uh, look, I think I think for those who didn't hear this talk, specifically the one that we just uh, uh, left now, the production and the choosing of the band and and the artist having a say. Look, I think I answered it the first time that I'm also flexible. I always prefer to have at least uh, when it comes to the band, I'm always a bit strict on when it comes to that. I, I really don't appreciate when the artist as well is suggesting names. It doesn't work for me based on the experience of the previous albums and and to the gel. Three, um, if you now are suggesting someone that I totally don't know, it's easier when you suggest someone that I know, maybe say, Ish, look, I would love to have Sabu on this one. Uh, preferably, um, um, uh, let's let's know that you know there are implications everywhere. If 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 you are choosing someone that I know that is a bit pricey, don't be shocked when I send you the code to that guy that you wanted. Uh, he's at this level, but again, those are discussions that happen when 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 we are discussing the whole thing. So again, um, I am flexible when it comes to that. Singers, very most of the time, I I really enjoy it when I have three. If we're doing six singers, I enjoy it when we do three of the artist and then three three from my side. Um, so that it's more of a workshop for them as well. And when we are gone, at least you can still maintain the sound and whatnot. Sometimes I agree when it comes to a piano player. 
maybe one keyboard player to come in as well, be part of it, so that when we go, or if I can't have your piano player, maybe because of budget and and setup as well, that I would say, have some of your band members that you work with just to be in the rehearsal with us throughout the time, so that he gets to hear how I do things and how I want these songs interpreted so that after the recording and you do your launches and all of that when we are not there then at least there's that flow this person has grown with you as well in the in the in the production quick question um, on, on 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 casting one more yeah. one last one i think casting is interesting as a topic <laughs> 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 so uh to you guys does does the brand matter when you does what the brand of the musician you're booking does it matter when you are you booking sound or is it also incorporated in your decision making okay quick one to me brand 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 means means a whole lot of things for me number one you wouldn't you you wouldn't be having a name or a brand your brand wouldn't be that big if you are not uh, a professional number one and that means your you, the the fact that you managed to be this well known and 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 did all these productions to, to really make your name this big and and be um, uh, in demand. That means there are specific things that you are doing right. So I really want to associate myself with someone who's like that, who's who's um, who's got time, who's who's good with time. And uh, I mean, look, let's make an example. Just a, a silly example. You know, I uh, some most of it, most of my other productions lately that came late after you guys introduced me to to Peter. I, 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 Peter, Peter and Jay, I think he's amazing when it comes to time and uh, I'm not time, I'm not talking time playing, but I'm just uh, time as in uh, 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 arriving at the rehearsal on time. I mean, Peter, if you say, if we say the rehearsal is at 10, Peter will read around 22, quarter two, he's there, he's setting up. When it's 10 o'clock, we start. I even get after him as a person who has booked him. So you look at all those things. If if then if then you are a brand, that means you're getting a whole lot of things. It's a collective of things that you are getting right. That's why your brand is out there. I really would love to be associated with a person like that. Imagine if I, I can't unveil a book. If it, I was you, if you are not well known and your brand is not as strong as the way you are asking the question, I, I I'm I'm sorry. So I book both. I book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not contradicting myself, but I book. I book. <laughs> I book brand and I book, um, you know, Connecting. talent as well and sound. So it, it's it's aligning. It's al it has to align, my brother. It just has to align. Lebs, uh, <laughs> what's your take? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm agreeing with you. Let me not let me let me not mess up your words, my brother. I'm agreeing with you, my brother. Branding is important. Uh, it's important, day. Eh? Because also another thing is the, the the artists or the clients that we get, they are aware of, of all these people, you know, uh, which is why sometimes they would they would come to you clearly knowing that you you will be even a better person to bring in a particular bass player or a particular yes. drama, you know. There are those uh, instances yeah, whereby they know uh, they would ask you, hey, so who are you going to bring on, on base? And they mention someone, they're like, oh, ish, I, I thought you would bring blah, 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 blah. Because they are already there. And with the brand delay, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Joseph, I'm sorry, my brother. Your question your question is, yeah, I'm going to for you too. Um, we are booking both, uh, but obviously, so, sometimes, sometimes I, I think I must just say this as a thing about, I know it's going to cause a vibe and um, it might just cause a vibe of which I'm cool with that. Sometimes you find that the client that comes is uh, uh, the one who's booking now. He's a, he's a very, uh, uh, God has blessed him financially. So... And uh, you you can hear from his 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 mouth that he he wants excellence and he's preaching excellence and he can back it up with uh, with a bit of paper. So I I sometimes when it comes to that I book even the ones that I've always wanted to work with just to make sure that my client is super happy. And 
I'm just, I'm just throwing it out. I'm just taking out some things out of my chest, guys. I'm, uh, there's a blockage. There's a blockage. Speak your heart, man. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just speaking my heart, but I'm just saying. Sometimes, you know, there's a client that comes and the client is really, really, really strong when it comes to that. And then obviously we try and, and match the standard. And I think if, if you are there, you are a client and you are still deciding who to call and you want to do a production and all of that. Uh, uh, sometimes just check your dreams as well uh, and, and, and just make sure that they balance, they align with with or just check the paper that it aligns with with the dream as well because sometimes they come they shoot i want this i want this get back i get and then when i send the code bro Muntu doesn't come back i mean we are used to these people who are shopping around i mean the other day we were in the studio i think i'm comfortable to say this now because he's a friend and i think he's here uh, <clears throat> the other person came to came to see no he's been calling wanting me to produce uh, a single for for them and then uh and, and it just and it just didn't work out, but then then he called Lebu for a quote, um, but I think he wasn't aware that me and, me and Lebu are tight. And then after he calls you, he wants to come in and meet you, and you are in my studio. And then when he arrives, he's he's finding me and you now are sitting here. He's here to ask for a quote and discuss production, and you're sitting here. And then I said, no, no. When you are done discussing this thing, Lebu is on the Lebu is next door as well. <laughs> just, just wrap it up. So those things they happen, but we 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 hope that people of the Lord are people are just strong in the Lord, you know, uh, and they are aligning. Let's just align the budgets and everything. Our dreams. As to learn buffet, as to learn quickly. Repertoire, repertoire. Um, this one, this one, we can hit quickly. Uh, I think it, it's 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 the same as as, as casting as well. Repertoire: Who's choosing? Uh, uh, who's choosing the songs? And how do you go about that? Sometimes I know that they come with the songs. How do you go about? Which ones do you decline? Which ones do you say yes to? And I know we've touched this on the other episodes. It's cool. We're just browsing through now. How do you choose the songs? Who's choosing the songs? And and blah blah blah. Le uh, jo Josie, let's uh, Lebza, let's go. Okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. Cool. Um. Here, here's a. Okay. okay. I want to try and be as quick as I can. Um. The concept of the album. That's the first thing that would say a lot. When I bring the project or cut out the concept. What are we trying? What are we? What are we talking about? about what are we really talking about uh in the okay lebza i'm gonna have to cut you label i'm uh, gonna have to cut you i'm gonna have to cut you because the, your your line is breaking again um uh do you want to try again just want to try again okay no 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 you are buffering hear me you are you are you are hectically buffering. Maybe just move the router to somewhere another corner. Josie, you wanna jump in quickly whilst he's sorting himself out? Okay. All right, guys. Seems like these guys, both of them, they've left me here. I'm alone now. Baba Legi Laba Zaloan, Bang Shi and the production, guys. These guys have left me here. Do the right thing, Baba. Do the right thing. Kulumalap. <laughs> okay. Uh, I please please move your your router to somewhere. Josie, are you there? Cause everyone just disappeared. Now I'm alone here. <laughs> uh, did I, did I, I touch the nerve? Did I touch a nerve? Oh, what's going on? I, am I safe? Am I still good? <laughs> uh, I yeah. I, I was I was I was away a bit, so I missed some details. Okay. Like, when I left, you Lev was answering the repertoire question. Okay. Can, can yeah. you hear me now? How's this now? Uh, uh, he's still a bit breaky, still a bit, uh, still a bit shaky. Let Aaron attend to you, and then once we continue, uh, yeah, um, I don't know what he covered on the repertoire. No, no, no. he didn't go far because when he was trying to talk, then uh, the line was breaking a bit. Okay, so how do we choose music? Um, yeah, just songs uh, quickly on that one. Cool. Um, I, I generally like getting the idea from the artist and, and, and finding what they have in mind and hearing their heart. And, and I usually just like getting as many ideas they, as they have, even if it's just a one liner, um, even if it's, it does it, it sounds like a turnaround or whatever it is. 
I, I usually, I, I just love working with new songs. That's my favorite thing to do. So I get that all that, and then we we have a sit in with the with the artist, obviously understanding, trying to understand the brief that we are going for, and trying to see if whatever they gave me fits the brief, or do we need to tweak it to make it fit the brief, and um, all those little details. And then as we go through them, we see the ones that work and the ones that don't. And I'm usually open to hearing the artist. If I'm like, uh, I don't think the song will work. If they like, I think let's give it a try. Then. It's that thing where I said the last time that I would keep trying to find myself in it until I, just, I hear what they're hearing in the song. And, uh, and from there, from, from whatever is left, also involved, involve other songwriters, man. Get, get as many options as possible so that you expand on, on the diversity in the sound, especially when you're, when you're, you're not dealing with a, a super prolific songwriter. It's better to just in, involve a, a couple of minds in there and get a different feeling from what you're putting together. But uh, don't yeah. always, always when you think about the repertoire, well, personally, how I think about it, um, I'm not a Tyler Perry fan, but I once watched the Tyler Perry movie and it inspired me in a big way. Uh, he, he, he always bends puts you in an emotional tension and while that tension is releasing he builds another one and while that one is releasing he keeps like he keeps putting you through this sequence of emotional tensions and and I think that's 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 how I view a song and that's how I view a repertoire so um your set list I'm always thinking about that what are you is it maintaining an emotional tension and release kind of thing uh, because sometimes when people write a song, maybe to just jump a little bit into songwriting, we, we oftentimes have these songs that sound like, uh, Lulu calls them, but the songwriter sounds like what DJ or so. So you just take a sentence there from Vashon and take a sentence from Kirk and <laughs> take a sentence from so-and-so, and then we just collage them into a cocktail of sentences it's like we don't know what the song is telling us it's like glory uh it's like you don't have a poignant message that you're driving so that's also one of the things that i generally try to think about looking into the song is like when you give me the song as one line what could i say about the one line that gives the one line weight it's like you can give me a sentence any sentence that says any random thing like um, I mean we are always going to say holy because holy is the is the leading song of worship sang by angels and archangels and it's been that song and it's going to remain that song because that is the best word that best describes who God is his uniqueness and his his distinct nature but um, you look at how David said holy David starts uh, out with with a negative entry point. He says, Lord, uh, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? I cry to you in the morning and you do not answer I cry in the evening. And, and when after he, and he, after he comes in from this negative tension, he then releases and says, but you are holy, you who dwells in the holy place. It's like he's saying the same thing that's said by the angels in uh, the seraphims in Isaiah 6, but his entry point is completely different. And, and those are just some of the tension releases that I think as you are arranging your music, think about them as, and think about the poignant message you're bringing out. And some, some, some songs don't need a big setup. Some songs all by themselves, just it's like, I, I remember when I heard a William McDowell song that says, Jesus is here. So everything I need is here. I think now I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about songwriting, not repertoire. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's that kind of thing. You kind of, all you're trying, all you're going for is, is, is an emotional tension and release, tension and release. It's, it's like bicep and triceps type of thing. Right. That's how we approach it. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, moving right along. We're going to another discussion on the side. Aaron, people are asking, when are you talking? But... Let, let me ask you, uh, uh, let me put you in a spot on a very tricky question. <laughs> I'm not a producer. <laughs> I'm let not a producer. Ask, <laughs> let's go for a commercial. Let's go for a commercial. I want to ask you a question. <laughs> it's an ad break. It's an ad break. And they're answering a percentage. 
you have literally done every recording. You've been doing all these recordings, up and comings, people that we don't know. Nini, yes. I call you, you tell me you're in Kurman. The next morning, you're <laughs> buying metal pack deep. Next day, you are in Venda. You do all these recordings. Out of all of them, out of all of them, uh, Ning, please forgive me if, if this question is not saved. My question is, out of all of them, wh how many have you come across that uh, there's a concoction, uh, there isn't flow between the producer and, and the artist? They don't understand each other and you feel there isn't a smooth vibe going on and they lack, this production lacks a real producer. Percentage, out of 100%, how many have you come across that you are recording? Obviously, I'm not going to chase clients away because we don't know who you're talking about. So, uh, uh, how many, percentage-wise? You know, honestly, when I'm booked for a recording, I focus on my work. I don't focus on the production because uh, yeah. there's a producer. The, 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 the artist has called that producer because he trusts that producer. So, yeah. I don't interfere in the, in, in the but I'm saying that I understand that. Don't, don't run away from the question. <laughs> I'm not running away from the question. <laughs> I told you I'm putting you on the spot because you are doing all these recordings. My question yeah, I, again. Aaron, Aaron is the leading content supplier for One Gospel. I think they should. Right now. Right somehow, now. I think they should find a way to credit him. <laughs> yeah. You know, I as need... the credits go up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to know, Aaron. I want to know. I want to know. I, my question again. <laughs> I'm saying, obviously, in comparison, in comparison to all these projects that you've been in and you've attended and you've recorded and you've tracked, I know you're a keyboard player. You play piano. <laughs> you play piano. My first motif rack, I bought it from you. The first time we met, I don't know, in 1990, what, what. But the question is, out of all of them, you've done our productions, you've done productions for other big producers who are there, who are peers. You've done for all the, the young ones who are coming up. Out of all of them, percentage, between uh, uh, 10 and 100%, how many have you <laughs> seen as some bit of confusion not flowing together? How many? How many do you think they really need producers, real people who to, real producers? One answer, question, and one answer. Uh, I'd say about 40% of them. 40% are confused or 40 or- No, or not, not really confused, but they, they can improve. Yeah, if they can actually, they need a good producer then to make it, yeah. Are you saying 40%? Are you sure yes. 40 is the right number? No, it is the right number. <laughs> no, he's happy Why? with 40. Why are you asking me a question if you know the answer? <laughs> no, we're just going to an ad break, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys, let's, let's, let's move along quickly. Um, this one, let's hit it quickly. Uh, public relations, PR, social media, uh relating with uh relating with your 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 supporters code of conduct uh label let me throw you in the social media how do you how do you use your social media to to benefit you uh as a, as a producer now number one and uh number two uh uh do you on your own as a producer now that is booked for production do you work on a on a certain uh, um, uh, a campaign when you're working on someone's pro, uh, production? Do you do you talk about it on social media? Do you advertise and do you, how how do you handle your social media in general? And how important is it is it for you as a producer? Uh, my line is not cutting anymore. I'm I think we're good now. All right. Cool. Um, um, social media is uh, is is it's uh, one of the greatest tools. Okay. Uh, I think Labels Line is still bad, ne? Am, tools. I, am I right? Yeah, it's still cutting. For us musicians, artists. Uh, uh, producers let's uh, let me cut you there let me, let, let's, um, let, me uh, let me cut you i think on the social media issue uh, 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 Josie, do you want to jump in i know that you're not there uh, on social media but how how 
I, I know you research. You research every day. You you are always on YouTube and you're always checking what other what are the trending things. How do you feel about social media? I know that uh, better, you don't want it for yourself, but how important do you think it is? I think I think it's 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 ab- absolutely valuable because it's it's almost like you it's like you put your CV out there. You you put a representation of yourself when people don't have immediate access to you. So it's it kind of can shape the way the public perceives you. So I think it is valuable. There's a lot of care that you has to be placed in how you use it in your interactions with people and and understanding that um, unfortunately, if you're a if you are dealing with production, you systematically become a brand. So understand that everything you're putting up is contributing to the integrity or the lack thereof of your brand. So I think it can really, it can make or break you if you don't pay attention to it. Um, I'm curious, unrelated, but somewhat related. What's what's you guys' take on, on stage names, which have grown a bit more ever since the advent of social media? Um, I personally don't have an issue with it. I don't, but I, I don't have a stage name because um, my, my general perspective was that I want to do music only one and I want, I want to be on stage for a long time. So I, I just kind of needed a name that works in every industry such that if I become like a, a deacon or if I go into mining or if I go into IT, I can still have a simple name that works instead of being like anointed worshiper or whatever, whatever. Um, but what's your, on that subject of, of social media, what's your take on, uh, why aren't you calling keys for instance? Or... <laughs> yeah, I think um, because we are in the stadium right now, I, it's a quite a very tricky uh, question. Yeah, well, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we are in the stadium right now. So. <laughs> and now this game doesn't end. Yeah, well, uh, even tomorrow, people can still view this. I wouldn't want to really go into it because it's a very tricky one. <clears throat> it's a very okay. Tricky one. Uh, <laughs> oh, you um, get you. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I think. I mean, all my life, I just believed in uh, having a good name, Jed. Not really. Not really to say the other ones. Uh, it's not a good name or whatnot. I always protect my name, and I want people to know me. I think um, what what has uh, the early days when I came into the music industry, I mean, in terms of production as well, uh, I used to hear, I used to sit around Bomjeit, Bo Libokama, and and uh, and you know, your Yorobi Malingas and whatnot. And what I used to love when they when they answer the phone, you know, say Mujali uh, Fatebe, uh, hello. You know, I I I've always loved, I've always loved hearing someone uh, introduces himself very well on the phone and this is my name or or if i call joseph and and me and joseph don't know each other i would say hey joseph how are you um yeah you're speaking to 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 level roller here yeah well so i i think I mina mean, i preferred having my name here clear because there's a lot of confusion now because others are calling themselves um guno horse pipe and then you know guno horsepower am i speaking to horse pipe or i'm speaking to horsepower but uh, look, I see there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's just, we can just call it a stage name or like, like DJs. I mean, some of them, they, we don't know them with their real names. I think it's up to you how you want to brand yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I mean, I prefer just, just having my name clear. That's why every social media, I, I've changed it later on to Koli Tabete because there was Kolani Mzalose and there's Kolani Mzalose and there's Kolani Stole. There's uh, uh, there was another Polani as well that I know I had I had to I had some issues with uh, some Sambro I used to get uh, Asia let me not expose but there was a confusion with the names uh, they kept on calling me for his money and uh, vice versa as well there was issues based on the Polanis there was a lot of Polanis then I opted to go with Kolita better so but every time when I go and I mean everyone calls me Kolita better so. I, I preferred keeping it like that. Obviously, I know there's other producers as well who have uh, names in name tags. I don't know how to call it, but brand names. I think yeah. it's cool. 
I think it's cool and fun. Um, um, and we are able to to remember them with that because obviously sometimes you find that there's a lot of Josephs out there. So, True. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, but I wouldn't want to really deliberate on this for too long because it's a quite a sensitive one um, and a tricky one. But for me, I think sticking to your name, Jay, it's 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 clear. Uh, are you answered? I I am I am. I think we are we are on the same page. It's 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 that case of of also just recognizing where you're going with with mm. the industry you're in because um, yeah. Like you moved from being a piano player to you moved from being a drummer to being a piano player to being a vocalist. So, I mean, it would have been awkward if you were totally the drama and then now, yeah, like, I'm not drama now, and now yeah. it's weird. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think it, it all depends on on where you're projecting that you're gonna go, and like I'm saying, I I don't see myself um, doing what I'm doing for a long time or forever so and and i'm very curious about exploring many different industries for for different reasons and yes. and i think it would it would be a struggle for me to to be joseph keys if i'm if i'm if i find myself in seminary or if i find myself in in medicine so that type of thing yeah. but anyway let me not interrupt the flow of the questions yeah how do you relate to your to your supporters Is Lewis still offline? Uh, he keeps coming back, uh, but he, if on, he, uh, no, I think now I see him, he's changing the... He's, okay. Yeah, he's, he's quite hectic, trying to sort out his line. So how do you relate to your supporters? Um, I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to, to find time to, to relate with the people that, that consequently end up pushing your brand because um, one of one of the most unfortunate things for for us is that we never get enough opportunity to do a an inventory check of who is who is representing us out there and who's pushing our names out there because I usually say there's there's a very high possibility that there are some recordings that I'm getting and I know this for sure that somebody who's not even musical just decided and who has never even met me to speak on my behalf and insist like no guys you can't do this don't call anyone else call this guy and so it's important i think to treat them um with with a degree of courtesy and appreciation uh whenever you find the opportunity it's just a bit of a struggle sometimes also to to keep maintaining a positive energy, which is why I think for me, one of the most pleasant things has been being as much away from the spotlight as possible. Um, because fortunately for me, I walk into a lot of places and many people don't know who I am. In fact, there are many gigs where I think that the, there was this cool incident that, that I always find funny. And it happens to me a lot where I was, we were doing a, a, a Dr. Doomy show and they wouldn't let me in. Um, and the show was about to start because they didn't know who I was. And it's, it's stuff like that that for me is helpful because it minimizes the traffic I have to deal with because I don't do well with people. But I think, uh, I say that to say it can be tedious because most people don't know the struggles you go through from moving from your house to get to the stage. That between your you're leaving your doorstep to get into the gig. There's a lot of people who can just do a lot to get on your, ner your, on your nerves. Uh, probably by the time you got to the venue, you fought with the person at the parking or you fought with the sound engineer or you fought with the promoter. And, and then your fan shows up in the middle of that whole situation or the artist didn't pay you. And they're like, hey, Kali. And you, it's like, you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's all those little things that can be a bit of a drag but i think if if we can and if we can find the grace if we, if we can find the energy we should try the best we can to mm -hmm. give um the people who support what we do a bit of attention and a bit of time obviously with a bit of regulation because 
some supporters can really want to support you every day with a phone call and that can be a bit um, overbearing. So yeah, but I think we, we should um, give them as much time as we can possibly find. But I'm hoping they also understand that sometimes you, you know, uh, unfortunately because of our limitations as people, we are not always at the best mood we, are poss we can possibly be in, but God being our helper, we, we trust that we can find yeah. the courtesy and the grace to deal with them like we should. Yeah, we are almost at the end. We are almost at the end. Um, um, I think uh, we are wrapping up actually. What I enjoyed the other year, I think you were produce, you were you were direct, you were producing the, the project and I was doing um, stage design and, and I was just a production manager. And I remember I had a, um, I don't know what's the right English word, Jay. we had a, a thing with one of the suppliers that I didn't call. I called a supplier that called someone else. And uh, <clears throat> It was it was nice to heat up, you know. There was a nice heat up argument that happened, and he didn't know who he was talking to. Yeah, well, good. I'm actually the guy that's gonna press uh, <laughs> transfer. You know, who's gonna transfer the money, and I'm the actual guy here who decides where you should put the light or not, where you must put it. You must put it there. You must put it there. And we had a nice, nice, nice thing going on, and. Um, I think later, just before the show started, he he sent me a text before he even came to me and apologized whilst we're in the same thing, <laughs> which was just amazing. <laughs> which was just, you know, it's nice to sometimes not to be known who's in charge, you know, but um, I guess it's one of those. Let's go into <clears throat> the the financial management. We are ending ending here, actually. Uh, financial management one reinvesting in the business two saving in savings and investments three personal spendings um, I think I would love to start it somewhere where I I remember I think two two three years ago I I argued with one of the guys that I had booked to 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 play in the band uh, but we were just arguing nicely as as brothers you know so i said to him he i was asking him about the laptop he was using and um and we and he told me that he doesn't have a sound card at home it doesn't have all of that and i needed him to do stuff for the pre-production uh, during the rehearsals um and he told me that he doesn't have a laptop he doesn't have a sound card or if he has a laptop, he doesn't have a sound card. And when I checked him out, I don't want to talk about the car, but I want to talk about his sneakers that he changes every day when he comes to the rehearsal. And I can see that each sneaker here is probably 2.5. And um, it's quite expensive sneakers, but you don't have a... Um, you, you don't have a sound card, which a sound card costs 3,000, 3.5, a decent sound card that can work. But you are actually changing sneakers every day when you come to the rehearsal. Um, <clears throat> what's your take on that? What's your take on, on just the financial management and all of that? And, and, and in reinvesting your money into your equipment and just having savings and investments, uh, you know? Um, yeah, I think um, I, I must be the first to admit that that area of my life, I really made a mess of <laughs> because uh, sometimes you don't, you, you don't realize the problem with, with what we're doing is that you don't, sometimes you don't realize how much money you're making as you're making it. You only see it sometimes in retrospect that wow, there was, there was a season where, where like a, a, a 20 grand coming into your account weekly was not a weird thing. But, but sometimes as it's happening, you don't realize. And so, and I think this is something that, that I think most people should pay attention to, especially if you're going to get opportunities. Whenever you work out your, your financial structure, um, 
and I, this is something Peter loves saying. You, he says, the thing that has brought in the money, find a way to put a percentage of the money you get back into it. So reinvest in the thing that makes you make money. So if you're an instrument player, um, find a way to invest in, in better equipment. Uh, get, like you're saying, get, get a laptop. In fact, a laptop, don't, don't get it as an instrument player. Just as a musician in life, get a laptop, get a sound card, get a mic if you're a vocalist. Because I mean, right now we are in an era and a season uh, where we really desired. And I think, Paul, you can confirm this, that we really wished to do a lot of productions now during this lockdown. The sounds are there, the, the instruments are ready, but we don't have the singers to do it because they don't have mics. So that, that is something that's a challenge uh, for most singers. They, they don't reinvest their earnings into the thing that is furthering them financially. So just put some of the money away into that. Um, get get proper equipment get something that that helps you work and that helps you get better at your craft and then also um i think thinking about savings and i think maybe aaron you can kick in there and just help people work out their their salvation with much trembling and fear when it comes to savings and investments uh, <laughs> yeah because again uh, one of the other challenges that happens like i said when when money comes in, unfortunately, if you if for us, um, I, unlike a nine to five environment, when you go to your next financial bracket, you know about it. You they they tell you, they give you, you they inform you that no, we're giving you a promotion. So this is how much you are now going to be earning in your new appointment letter and all that. So, um, but but for what we do, you you never get a good opportunity to know that you're moving from a financial bracket perspective uh, because it's not really clearly stipulated. Nobody tells you that now your monthly earnings have moved from five grand to 35 grand a month. Uh, nobody tells you that. It's just random. Sometimes the tricky thing is that it's the volume of work that increases, not the rate you're charging. And so it's easy, it's easy to not realize that you're making a lot more money than you used to make because you're still charging probably your 3.5 per gig. It's just that you're getting a lot more gigs now. And now that affects your bottom line. But, you know, all those things kind of may end, end up making you feel like I'm waiting for when I have money to start investing or start saving, only to find out that you actually already do have money. You have enough to put away. You have in, in, enough to invest in something that can kind of give you a return on investment. Uh, so I think look into stuff like that. Um, it's like what we said the other day, uh, in the bank, they have they have uh, financial advisors just walk in, it's free. And if, if, it, if you wanna go even on a more complicated level, you can, you can find your own private financial advisor. Guys, Aaron is an accountant, if you don't know. <laughs> Talk to Aaron, let him open you up and, and sort out your, your documentation and all that stuff and um and and work it out and then balance it out obviously your all your reinvestment in the business and your personal savings and investments and and balance it out with with uh with your personal spendings there's a system that a friend of mine uses that i think is brilliant uh, um if i knew better i would have started with it so he has a a special account for personal spendings so so whenever he he works out his monthly expenses there's that one which if he wants to go 10 up it's there's a card for that but mm. if that one runs out it's like yeah I, I guess i'm staying home for that and then he can temper with the personal savings and so all those little things i think are things to think about so that you can pace yourself because uh one of the problems we have and this is not even a, an instrument player problem. It's a, it's a, it's the problem we have as an industry. It's, it's like we, we don't have enough savings to push us for a long time. And I'm pretty sure right now, a good deal of us after this lockdown are already on a serious back foot because our savings are almost depleted. 
And so if this goes on for another 18 months, <laughs> or if it goes on until 2021, December, uh, we, we would really be praying new kinds of prayers. So I think that's what I would say about finances. Yeah, uh, I think I think I think I think just to make it clear, because people I can see that they are seeing that we're quoting Aaron and um, um, Aaron, um, uh, w w your business. How how far can you help um, uh, individuals? What it, wh what exactly can you help with when it comes to finances? Maybe just break it down quickly uh, in and out, Juju. Okay, <clears throat> I can help with uh, okay. I think the, the biggest uh, problem, the biggest mistake that musicians are doing, mm -hmm. they don't, there's no distinction between their business side of it and their personal spending. You, mm -hmm. A lot of you guys have companies, but mm -hmm. when you invoice the money gets to your company and you spend all of, all, all of the money for your, personal, for your personal thing. So there's no distinction between what is a business expense and what is a personal expense. So mm -hmm. I advise them in a way that for example, if you don't have a company or paying a company for you, then when you invoice the client, then it will get paid to your company. Then at month end, you will have you will draw a salary. Then from that salary, you will pay pays you uh, pays you end. If if it falls within the bracket where you have you need to pay tax, you pay pays you end. And then if you if if you've got maybe an assistant, for example, if you 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 have a studio and you have an assistant, then you also put that uh, that that assistant on your payroll and register them for UIF. That, that's why currently a lot of I hear a lot of musicians are complaining that uh, no the government is not looking after us you know, they, they forgot about us no the system says if you have a company and you are tax compliant and you have employees you can claim from UIF but a lot of of you guys or oh, I'm not saying you you specifically but a lot of musicians and a lot of production companies are not they are non compliant that's why they, they, they can't even claim. How, how do you want the government to, to, to assist you if you have not paid a cent of personal of your income tax? You see, so I assist them in, 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 that, in that regard where I open up companies for them. At the end, I also help them with their personal tax. And also, if, for example, you want to you buy a house, you need to have a track record. Like you need to have a, 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 a proof of earnings. So if you've been submitting income tax, uh, banks these days, they want an, what we call an IT34, which is an assessment. For example, if you if you go to the bank and apply for a bond, and you say you're earning fifteen thousand, they want they want that proof that says uh, you, you you actually declaring that from SAS, which is an IT thirty four. So if you if you are not been submitting, then you won't be able to get a bond. So you 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 complying also helps you to build your 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 career also also for also also for your future as well because. You can't. Have, you 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 find yourself you find yourself in a position where you, you now you are you are unable to buy a property because you don't have a proof of income and only to find out you you're making a lot of money but you you don't know that because you don't you don't keep a record and you know you, you, and you you're not submitting anything to SARS. so I help them in that regard yeah hmm. and actually a whole lot yeah, I do a lot <laughs> not just <laughs> so I, anything that has to do with accounting tax and payroll I help I, I, I do that yeah. And I also do, if you've got employees, for example, I also do payroll, so I'll pay them on your behalf and then I'll pay the pays you earn and UIF on the seventh of each month, yeah. Hmm. All right. Guys, all of you, I'm definitely sure you heard that part. Uh, I'm sure everyone was listening. Uh, thank you, thank you, Aaron. Um, um, I know that you've been helping us since way back, so... Um, um, you are the guy to call. Let's. Uh, I think. I think just before we move to the last point, I wanna. I wanna jump into, into the reinvesting. The reinvesting in your in your in your craft. Um, look like 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 guys. We see we see what is happening now. We're not sure what's going to happen after this this lockdown number one. Um, uh, but I don't wanna uh, advise. Of advice looking at what is happening now with the pandemic my 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 advice goes to the singers uh, let me start with the singers some of the singers that i started with i'll mention i'll mention like your uh, the people that actually uh, i used to work with even back then your your sviso kanile as your temko simangale uh, um, um, there's quite a lot of them uh, your tumfutis your 
quite a lot of singers that I used to work with. I remember there was an era where, where when, the, when the iPads came in, pretty much almost all of them, they bought iPads, as, as obviously we advised when we were working, that you can, as a singer, I think there's three things that I would say you should have, just basic. If you can get yourself a mic, it can be just a normal uh, speaking mic, uh, SM58, or get the studio mics, um, and and I know that some of these some of these things they sound a bit expensive when when you go to the shop, but trust me, they they help. Some of them are expensive based on the quality or the depth that they can go. So you can get a decent mic for um, less than three thousand, less than five thousand. Um, uh, there's normally sales happening and all of that. So <clears throat> I I would really advise that you get yourself a mic. Preferably have have two mics, have a uh, SM58 and have um, um, a studio mic. Obviously, I think I think we'll prepare something. I'll I'll try and prepare something that uh, starter packs starter packs of, of of equipment that you can buy. But if you if you have a mic as a singer, you are a singer. Most I'm sure you use your instrument is voice, so you need a mic. That's number one. Number two is get yourself a sound card where you can plug in this mic. Uh, you can get yourself a sound card. I mean, now there's not really a special, but there's a sound card that sells for 2.5. Uh, decent, decent preamps that will sound right, number two. Number three, you need to get yourself, at least get yourself a laptop. I mean, my MacBook Pros, MacBook Pros are all over the place now. You get them for like 5,000, you get them for 3.5, you get them for 10,000, you get them for 20-something thousand. I'm sure one can afford just a normal uh, uh, laptop to work with. Preferably, I advise going towards Mac because the uh, um, reason why I'm saying that it's stable, number one, and number two, some of the programs that are smart and easy to use uh, are, are, on, are on Mac, and it's easier, we can connect. I mean, like now, there's a software that has been released called Session Wire, where we, I can, we can literally do a session now, wherever you are, and put in keyboards. I was doing a session yesterday, with, with uh, two days ago, with Gamma, and... He could see me, I could see him, he can hear my keyboard, I can hear his keyboard right then. I press play, he can hear everything. I'm like, put the keyboard there, put this here, can you put a bell here, can you put this? We literally worked for like three, four hours on a song and and we managed to make it work. At least work still continues in that way. So so it, with, with regards to singers, I know there's few that have uh, uh, studios and some of them have the studios now because their husbands are producers. So, which is an advantage. But my advice is get a laptop. If you can't get a laptop, you can get an iPad if you want to get to be smart. You can get a laptop. You can get an iPad. Sorry, you can get an iPad. There are programs that will suggest to you. There's Cubase for iPad. There's Antrek. There's, uh, um, um, there's Aura. Uh, 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 Aaron? What's is, is Aura, ne? That, that, that software. The one that you on, on iPad where you can record voices, record you can multi-track on it, actually. I think it's Aura. It's Aura. Aura. Yeah. Aura. Yeah. yeah. So there's, yeah. there's quite a number of... of, if, of even GarageBand is decent, man. Yes, even GarageBand. Even garage uh, in fact, GarageBand is... tracking. Yeah, so vocals. Because what would happen is I can send you... I can send you... I can send you a backtrack. I can send you the instrumentals and say, okay, can you put, put soprano there? Maybe I'll just put a guide. And then you can just come in and do a soprano on top of it. And then you send back those files. It's easy. You can do that on your iPad. You don't need the whole studio. And again, on the very same iPad, you can just, there are micro, there's what we call, uh, what is that thing? The iRig. It's it's more like a sound card kind of thing. So you can put a mic okay. through that. It is. It's iRig, no? And connect uh, to You can. Yeah, and connect it to your iPad. Okay. You don't need... Can you spotlight me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Can you spotlight uh, Josie? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a mini sound card like this. It, it yeah. works on... Uh, it works on on a laptop and it works on on a on iOS devices. So you can plug it into your iPad, and use it as a sound card, plug on, on into your phone, and you can plug in your mic, and do a lot of things. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Continue. And, and, and also for streaming, you can get this one. It's called the the iRig Stream. The iRig Stream as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, so singers, uh, uh, this is this is directed to the singers and 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 obviously it's other instrumentalists as well. I mean, this works with guitar as well. This works with guitar, bass. Um, if you don't have all these big equipments like your laptop and big sound cards, you can still get these small things. 
just f- so that you can you can work you know and and record your harmonies i mean i remember the other time i was working with with sviso kanyila in my studio way back when he had the ipad i mean he came to me with harmonies that he had done already on the ipad you know with okay this is a song i want to do and he had put soprano and put alto nicely on the ipad and we just played press play we listened nicely and then i started working working those arrangements and whatnot so it it makes life easier it makes makes it, it i think we as we are we are just re- investing in your in your in your company or or yourself um uh, thirdly after getting the right device whether it's your phone or an ipad if you can let's let's get dslr cameras or any type of a nice camera or you can just get two phones i know i know there's other people who carry two phones you can have another phone that has got a nice camera on it just to record your visuals as well and then i think i think on the next talk just before we start i'll i'll I'll, I'll try and put together stuff that you can buy that is cheaper just to put together as singers and when it comes to instrumentalists and producers and all of that i think most of you know you have to have a laptop and have all those plugins those omnispheres stylus and all of that just to do a nice production and two pre-productions uh, specifically as i think strictly on musicians now the instrumentalists i i i really advise that you get yourself laptops get yourself lap- a laptop definitely must get a laptop don't do ipads you can work with an ipad if the budget is not there but I think getting a laptop and a proper sound card that would really work. So when you do pre-productions as well, that that will help uh, speed up the process. Um, uh, now, I think I think we are good. That everyone got understood what we're talking about when it comes to that. Um, let's go to the last one. I know that we lost label. Are you are you there? Because we can see you clearly, but we can't hear you. We can yeah, see be- you like before you go into the last one. I just want to clarify something with regards to yeah. the text. I think yeah. a lot of people have this misconception that when you file to SARS, for example, you're yeah. gonna have to pay, you pay tax. Not all the time you pay tax. Even if when you made a loss, just file it. You'll use that loss to you'll carry that loss forward so that in the in the following year, when you make a profit, that loss is gonna help you to reduce the tax that you that you have to pay. And also, if you are the the tax threshold every year gets increased, the tax threshold for like for example for this for now is eighty three thousand one hundred, which means if you earn from zero to 83,100, which is um, 6,925 per month, you don't have to pay tax, but you still have to declare if you have to declare. So it doesn't mean that you have to pay tax all the time. Mm. Okay. Oh, I saw I saw some of the, the questions around that. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a bit clear earlier on. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, cool. Anyways, we're still gonna have a discussion with a financial advisor later on. And, uh, and again, I know that some of you are requesting us for, to talk really deeply about songwriting and, and, and clarifying on the royalties as well and all of that. Um, we are saving those discussions for next week um, or the week after next, but just before we close season one of, of, of the producer's talk. So we'll, we'll go through all of that. Now, let's go to the last one family and uh, spirituality i know that um uh, 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 apostle Solomon was here on, on 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 monday and friday he touched strong on the spirituality as well um and he touched a bit on the family and whatnot um i think when it comes to that i i i, I would love to say look i think it's always difficult for us especially especially for the producers um I know that with other people, born, especially like singers, they come in and, and do the singing and do late rehearsals and go home. Most of the time you find that after the rehearsal, I still have to go and work I mean, as a producer to, to finish up the work and prepare for the next day. Um, I think what I would want to say when it comes to that is, is to push yourself and try as hard as you can to spend some time with your family. Um, um, it's a it's a learning process as well and you need to master that and it's going to take a while for you to get it right i don't know some might might get it right quickly um but i think it is very important to spend some time with your family and 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 just bond with people because i feel like music um, it's an, one it's an emotional process in jay on, on its own and there's and you do a lot of thinking you end up losing a whole lot of things that are happening around you because you're focusing so much into uh, productions and i have seen that happening before where i spend hours and hours in the studio uh, hence i decided to set up a studio somewhere else i didn't want the studio in my house because 
I, when I go home, I just want to focus on what is happening at home and focus on my kids and, 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 and my wife. So one of the biggest challenge is, is having a setup at home for me. I don't think it's going to work for me. I always prefer go outside and work and do all of that and then come back home and leave your work there. Unless uh, you are pressured with time and all of that, you can adjust. But, um, uh, uh, Lebu, are you, are you back? I hope I'm back. I hope so. Yes, we can hear you clearly. What's your take on the uh, family? And, um, and, and let's start with the family. We'll come to the spiritual part. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just going to just echo your words. Um, I think also I've... It, this is something that I, I myself I, I mentioned it the on one of the episodes. Um, time, 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 time. Um, it's never find enough. a balance. Pardon? It's never enough. Yeah, I'm I'm just saying find a balance. Find a but always try and find a balance between work and family. Um, even if it comes to a point whereby you have days that you dedicate to your family. I mean, you know, if we are working on a production that will take more of your time within that month, you can even say, look, on Sundays, it's just me and the family. That means on that Sunday, there's no laptop, there's no uh, pre-production, there's nothing. You're just focusing on your family. And even even your wife, your kids, um, your family members, they get to know that on Sundays, he he's got, uh, he gives us full attention at least, you know. So you must always compensate for that so that at the end, you don't find your, your family uh, uh, resenting um, or being against uh, your work or your gift or your business, saying, hey, this guy doesn't have time for us, you know, so just find find a balance. I, I'm, I'm just echo, echoing what you were saying, you know, because um, our families are actually our biggest supporters, you know. Um, it wouldn't be nice to find yourself in a position whereby your family does not support you that much because already you have given them bad signals that uh, this work or career you've chosen uh, requires 99% of your time and you're only giving them 1%. Uh, but I think if you find a balance as time goes on, even uh, the family gets to even support you more. Yeah. That's my point. Siabonga uh, Sux uh, uh, just says, never sacrifice your family for your music career, but be a sacrifice with your family for the benefit for the benefit from your career. Uh, Josie, your take? On family. On family. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a nice one. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> well, we are we well, we are fully aware we are fully aware that you are not married. We are fully aware that you are not married, and we are we are still praying. You know, we are still. Uh, By the way, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. Here's a story, by the way, that uh, probably Lebo doesn't remember. The first time I tried to book Lebo. <laughs> for a gig which was a very small gig because at the time um he 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 cancelled on me because he said to me he wasn't he hadn't been spending enough time with his then girlfriend who's now his wife thank god <laughs> Yeah, so I thought that was cool. I think it's worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but but look, um, on 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 your attempt to climb the ladder of success, there's gonna be a lot of temptations to throw a lot of things under the bus, at at the with a desire to just get to the top, and sometimes your friendships get compromised your family gets compromised and your church gets compromised. I mean, I, for the first time this year, I was actually looking forward to going to our church's Easter convention for the whole weekend because 
I hadn't been to our church's Easter conference fully for the whole weekend since 2013. So this was going to be <laughs> the year. And then, well, we all know what happened. But yeah, um, what hoping, one of the... Were you hoping that uh, uh, within that we weekend? No, no, no. It was just for my church. It wasn't for... <laughs> I'm just checking. Maybe you were hopeful that you will meet someone. So this is the time. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm not I'm not trying to meet anyone right now. So but <laughs> <laughs> can I make the point? Um one of the things that, that made me re recalibrate my priorities and kind of rethink about rethink the whole thing of how how where you place your family and all that was uh, and I was telling a friend of mine this, it hit me when I realized. I remember every event I've missed because I have a gig, but I don't remember the gigs for which I missed the events. And it's like, that for me was like a clear thing to say, yeah, no, I think you end up prioritizing things that at the end of the day have no practical value. I mean, whichever way you go at it, whether you go and miss a couple of gigs, eventually the Lord is going to get you there. There are gigs that I canceled, um, over time when I started to kind of think rationally and and still the Lord with his unlimited grace finds a way to get you to the right place at the right time. So I think if you can, um, after all is said and done, after you, after you stop being as other people's favorite piano player or other people's favorite singer, after you stop getting the likes, uh, the one set of people, one group of people that are always going to be there is your family. So I think try the best you can to put them at the front line of all your prioritizations. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Uh, uh, hoping that today's talk was um, had enough information for you guys to thrive out there. Spotlight. Okay. Um, um, thank, you so much. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is where we close tonight. And uh, <clears throat> we'll pick up nicely on, on Monday again. And uh, shout out to all the people on Ocreo uh, listening. And uh, thanks to our other partners, to our partners, Basilia and uh, LT Branding. Uh, Crochet, thank you. Um, and uh, we we are continuing on Monday. Please tune in. Um, yeah, Monday is very they get very interesting. I know. So come through. We are talking another subject. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, please don't miss quote us out there and um, and only fo focus on a piece that one didn't say right and then take it and take your friend and say, you see, he was talking about you here. Um, our inboxes are always open. Come through for clarity. We will um, we'll, uh, tackle and discuss it. But thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We're, and we apologize for starting late. We had a glitch there. Um, and we are hopeful that on Monday we'll start on time. Uh, I think our president has said us tell him I'm going to late. So, um, but we'll make sure that we keep time. We stick to our time. And um, yes, we are out. We will see you on Monday. Thank you. <laughs>